What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on, everybody? I hope you all had a phenomenal week. Uh, it was a really exciting one for us because not only uh, did we get to open our normal cracker packs and do a lot of fun stuff uh, for the Instagram and things like that, but we also, thanks to all the patrons, got to open our box of Shards of Alara. Uh, not something I ever thought I would get, be able to open, I gotta be honest. Uh, so it was really exciting for me to kind of go through that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did not see it, I definitely recommend go checking it out. And again, a huge thank you to all the patrons for making that possible. It truly would not have been without your support. But today, we are opening a pack, uh, up a pack of Time Spiral. Uh, this set is actually really, really exciting. I think there's a lot of cool stuff in this one. Uh, part of a really interesting block in general. Uh, but Time Spiral offered a lot of really interesting mechanics that I'm hoping uh, we'll get to kind of see and evaluate as we go through these packs. Uh, Suspend comes to mind in particular as one of the more interesting ones. Uh, but as always, we are going to go through this as if we are uh, drafting the set. So we'll hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick would be if we were drafting this set. I uh, did not draft during this time, so we're a bit of a we're, we're going to be learning a little bit together, uh, but certainly some techniques and things that we'll be able to apply uh, for any set, and hopefully we'll be able to talk about that as we go through. So our first card here is Assassinate. It is a sorcery for two and a black, very simply destroy target tapped creature. Uh, speaking of techniques, uh, Bread is a very popular one. Uh, bombs and removal are the premium things that you want to be looking for, uh, the B and the R in Bread. Uh, and this is a really, really great, efficient piece of removal. Uh, it hits any tapped creature, so obviously if there's a threat on the opponent's side of the field that's attacking you, uh, it will be able to target that. Uh, any other kind of just general attacking creatures uh, or uh, abilities that cause the creature to tap mean that you'll be able to target it. So this is a very, very good card. The art is interesting as well, but uh, definitely a good start to this pack for sure. Uh, Iron Claw Buzzard, Buzzard Ears uh, is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a red, and it can't block creatures with power 2 or greater, uh, but you can pay 1 red and it gains flying until the end of the turn. So, I don't love this card. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two, uh, for 3 on the onset with downside uh, that it can't like chump block, basically. Uh, but on top of that, it does get flying, but it's conditional flying. Uh, you have to pay more mana just to do it, and it only lasts until the end of the turn. Uh, that's just a lot of investment, and I don't think it's worth it. So very quickly, I'm going to say this is not a great card. Um, maybe for filler purposes, if you're looking at curve, you could consider this. Uh, solely because that flying can make it evasive, but I, I don't love it, I'll be honest. Uh, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, Temporal Eddy uh, is a sorcery for two and two blue. Put target creature or land on top of its owner's library. Uh, I actually very much enjoy cards like this. Uh, it's a huge, huge tempo swing to not only bounce something, uh, but to also put it on top of the library, which means you're blanking the opponent's next draw. Uh, that's very, very good tempo. It's It just ensures that they're kind of taking a turn off, uh, especially in limited, where a lot of the time, uh, especially at four, uh, getting on towards maybe even turn six, you're a lot of times going to be playing only one spell per turn. Uh, and so bouncing that spell and putting it on top of the library just means not only are you blanking the draw, but you're kind of blanking an entire turn from the opponent, which is huge. So I actually really like this card. I think I like Assassinate better. That's that hard removal, and I think that's a little bit more powerful. This does hit lands as well as creatures, with it, which is worth noting, but there are not a lot of lands in Limited that you're going to be super worried about. Uh, and in a set like this, I can't think of at least a ton of lands that you would really want to bounce. So uh, really focused on creatures. Very good card, but I think Assassinate's better. Uh, Tendrils of Corruption is an instant for three and a black. It deals X damage to target creature and you gain X life where X is the number of swamps that you control. So a uh, very powerful card as well. And at instant speed, it does cost one more than Assassinate, but... Uh, it gives you a little bit of life gain. The only uh, kind of downside to this is that it really encourages you to be and encourages you, excuse me, to be in only one color. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You can get very, very lucky, but 
Keep in mind, if you're picking one of these cards and passing the other, it's very likely that by the time it gets back to you, somebody at least will have taken the other one uh, because it is a premium card. Removal's at a premium. So I do like this card. I don't know which is better. I think I'm going to keep them together for now. Uh, I do like the flexibility and the scaling of tendrils, but obviously assassinate just deals with any tapped creature, which is pretty huge as well. So it's worth noting that the life gain here might set it apart, uh, but we'll we'll see as we go through the rest of the pack. Uh, Lightning Axe uh, is an instant for only one red. As additional cost to play it, uh, either discard a card or pay five uh, of any color, which is a lot. It deals five damage to target creatures, so it is removal. The, the upside to something like this is in the set, uh, there is such a thing as Madness, uh, which gives you basically the ability to play a card as you discard it, and generally it's for a cheaper cost. So it's actually uh, very, very nice to have cards like Lightning Axe that enable that discard. So I do like it. Uh, my my uh, initial thought would be don't take this over the other two, uh, solely because this is not as good on its own because it costs a lot more. Uh, or you have the inherent downside of discarding a card. Now, that being said, you can use that as an upside, of course, but you're you're banking on having other cards to make it an upside. Uh, and so the other the other pieces of removal that we have are just kind of good on their own. Uh, tendrils, obviously, a little less so. It's dependent on swamps, but lands, you're obviously going to be playing regardless of what you're doing. So uh, I would say Lightning Axe, probably not as good as the other two. However, still very, very powerful uh, and efficient, assuming you can discard a card that's worthwhile. Uh, Giora's Time Bug is a 1-2 artifact creature for two of any mana. Uh, tap it and choose target permanent you control or suspended card that you own. Uh, if that permanent or card has a time counter on it, you can remove a time counter from it or put another one on it. Uh, interesting card. It works very well, obviously, with suspend. My initial thought, though, would be take this if you know you're going to have a lot of suspend cards. Uh, it'd be great to be able to play this in a suspend deck, take those time counters off, get the creatures early or get the spells early. Absolutely phenomenal. But obviously, if you don't have any suspend cards, it's not worth it. So I would wait, maybe take this later in the pack. It does slot into any deck, which is great uh, being colorless. But I would definitely want to have the suspend cards first. <clears throat> Uh, Chameleon Blur is an instant for three and a green. Prevent all damage that creatures would deal to players this turn. Very classic fog effect and very, very bad and limited. Uh, I've talked about these a lot, but fog effects do not progress you in the game. They simply stall the game. Uh, this card slot could very easily be a creature or a bomb or a piece of removal, something that's going to get you further in the game, not just a stall card. Uh, and so I, I really, really avoid cards like this. I think uh, they're just, generally speaking, quite bad. Constructed, different story. You can turbo fog into stuff. There's there's places for them. Not so much in limited. I just, I've never found a good place for them. I don't think they're good, uh, really, in any circumstances. Uh, please feel free, obviously, to let me know if you've had success with them. I'm sure some people have, but uh, it just doesn't seem like a card that I would really want in a limited deck. Uh, Subterranean Shambler is a 2-3 three for 3 and a red. It has an echo cost, so uh, the echo cost is 3 and a red. At the beginning of your upkeep, if this, is, if this came under your control since the beginning of your last upkeep, you do have to sacrifice it unless you pay the echo cost. So if you want to keep this around as an extra 4 mana on top of the original 4. Uh, but when it comes into play or leaves play, it deals 1 damage to each creature without flying. Uh, obviously, that can be a very powerful effect. However, it is only one damage, and a lot of times uh, you're going to not really hit a lot uh, with only one damage. You're certainly going to deal damage to a lot of stuff, but uh, you're probably not going to kill much. Uh, certainly you can team that with some other effects, maybe get some damage in and hopefully deal with some other creatures, but I don't think this is a very good card. Uh, it seems quite bad. For four mana, you're getting a 2-3 that deals some damage, but I don't think enough to really make it worth it. So I don't love it. Uh, certainly, I think there are instances where it would be good, but I think we've got a lot better options already. Uh, Cyclopean Giant uh, is a 4-2 for 2 and 2 black. When it's put into a graveyard from play, target land becomes a swamp. Remove uh, the giant from the game. So Really not a great card, in my opinion. Uh, it's a 4-2 four, for 4, so it's kind of there on the power uh, side, but not so much on the toughness side of things. 
And I think that makes it really, really bad. It's just so easy to deal with. Uh, and r turning a land into a swamp, I don't think is really uh, of any relevance, to be honest. <laughs> um, maybe in com combination with tendrils, uh, you can get an extra swamp, but that seems very, very bad. So I don't like this card at all. I just don't think it's very good. Uh, Screeching Sliver uh, is a 1-1 sliver for one blue. All slivers have tap. Target player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So if you don't know what the slivers are, they're a tribal uh, synergy that essentially boosts all other slivers. And we can see that here. All slivers get X ability. Uh, in this case, obviously a mill ability, which I don't think is worthwhile because it is only one card. I just want to mention that. There are certainly some slivers that are very, very worthwhile, even in limited. Uh, and if you get those, try and move into it. But I do think it's a bit of a high risk uh, strategy. If you don't find the number of slivers that you need to make it worth it, it tends not to be very good. Uh, or the, the payoff slivers in general. Uh, this one, not amazing. Uh, definitely not a reason to be in the sliver deck. But if you find yourself pulling something really, really good and you want to give it a shot, I would. Uh, it is a very, very high risk, high reward strategy. Lots of fun stuff that you can do with it. Unfortunately, this is not one of the, the flagship cards for limited for sure. Uh, our first uncommon is Haunting Him. It is four and two black for an instant. Target player discards two cards. Uh, if you played this spell during your main phase, that player discards four cards instead. So obviously pretty awesome in the sense that you're getting a lot of value theoretically, uh, especially if you're playing at main phase, you're getting four cards for the price of one. However, worth noting, it's six mana. Lots of times at that time, uh, or at that point in the game, at turn six, you're not going to even have four cards in your hand. Uh, and so a lot of times this is not a worthwhile card to play, in my opinion. This card can be very, very strong. I don't want to give the wrong impression. Uh, but generally when it's so expensive like this, it tends to be much, much worse. Uh, just because you can't bank on your opponent having any cards in their hand, let alone four in this case, uh, or even two if you're playing at an instant speed. So... I don't love this card. I do think there are cards like this that can be good. Uh, Thoughtseize obviously is great. Uh, Distress, I believe, is the card. Uh, is uh, one mana to pull a creature or an artifact or something like that. And I think that card is quite good uh, because in Limited, you're playing a lot of creatures, but it's only one mana, so you can do it turn one. Uh, this, obviously, a little too late in the game, in my opinion. Uh, Cal Calciform Pools, excuse me. Uh, is a land. Uh, you can tap it for one generic mana. You can pay one generic, tap it, and put a storage counter on it. And then you can pay one, remove X storage counters from it, and add X mana in any combination of, of either white or blue to your mana pool. Uh, so this is a really interesting thing. This is part of the storage land cycle, uh, so-called because it is a storage counter. Uh, and the idea here is if you don't have anything else to do with your mana, throw some counters on this, and then later you get a huge payoff with lots and lots of mana. Uh, and they actually are quite nice. I do think they're good to pick up. I don't think they're good to pick up right away uh, because just on the onset, they don't really fix you. Uh, they are kind of just generic lands until you get those counters. So they are very, very good. If you find yourself in those colors, absolutely pick them up, especially if there's just nothing else really exciting in the pack, but uh, not so great as a first pick, in my opinion, just because, again, they don't fix you on the onset. Uh, Sudden Shock is an instant for one and a red. It does have split second, which is an interesting mechanic. As long as this is on the stack, players cannot play spells or activate abilities that are not mana abilities. So essentially what this means is the spell cannot be responded to in any way uh, unless it's a mana ability. Uh, and that's really, really powerful because essentially that means it's uncounterable. There's not anything that they can do about it, which is huge. Uh, this Sudden Shock in particular deals two damage to target creature or player. Love the flexibility. Love it at instant speed. Love the Sudden Shock for two mana. That's amazing. Uh, really, really like this card. And honestly, on the sake of efficiency, I think this is the best of the cards that we have so far. It's also amazing that it cannot be responded to. I think that's really, really important. Uh, and something that we already talked about, when you're passing two black cards like these, which are good, strong pieces of removal you're kind of putting one of your next picks, uh, or excuse me, one of your opponents seated to the, you know, the next in the draft order. You're kind of forcing them into picking something like this this early on. Uh, and that can be a problem because that means later in the packs, uh, you're not going to get the cards that you want because your, your other opponents are actually the ones taking them. Uh, however, 
We've not seen a whole lot of really good red cards in the pack so far, except Sudden Shock. And so what that pushes me to believe is Sudden Shock is actually the better pick because I'm not, I'm, it's all about signaling. I'm not signaling to anybody else that red is open. Whereas with these, I could be saying black is still open. Uh, and so I actually believe for now, Sudden Shock is actually the pick. While it doesn't have the highest upside in terms of uh, these obviously deal more damage or deal with more creatures, this is a, a safer pick in that regard and very, very powerful still. So definitely leaning for, towards Sudden Shock, but we'll see what our rare is. And it is Deep Sea Kraken. Uh, so it's a 6-6 six, six for 7 and 3 blue. That is 10 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. That being said, it is unblockable. Uh, and it has Suspend 9. So Suspend is an interesting mechanic. Uh, for this, you pay 2 and a blue. You exile this with 9 time counters on it. Uh, and then what you do is at the beginning of your upkeep, you remove a time counter from it. When it has zero, you actually cast the spell. So it is actually a, a really interesting way to like kind of ensure that you have a backup plan. Uh, when an opponent plays a spell, if Deep Sea Kraken is suspended, remove a time counter from it. So on top of that, this is going to be able to remove those time counters very, very quickly. Uh, and I do think that that makes this uh, absolutely the pick. It's such a strong bomb, uh, especially being unblockable. And inherently it causes uh, or it devalues all of your opponent's spells because they're playing spells that just means this is going to come out quicker so i actually really like this pick oh and of course we have our time shifted cards really interesting one nickel bolus that's pretty cool uh it's a seven seven for two two blue two black and two red already kind of out on this one just want to say uh but it, it does have flying and at the beginning of your upkeep you sacrifice it unless you pay grixis colors uh blue black red uh, whenever it deals damage to an opponent, that player discards his or her hand, which is pretty powerful, I will go ahead and say. Uh, unfortunately, just off of the mana uh, restrictions on this, I don't I don't recommend playing it. Uh, you Nickel Bolas fans, I understand. I, I get it. I would love to play this card. However, that's a very tough mana cost. Uh, yes, we have the storage lands to maybe help with that, but I don't think it's a great option to pick. I do think Deep Sea Kraken is a better one, uh, especially the fact that it's unblockable. I think that's great. So really interesting, really cool pack. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.